Welcome to Car Sales Best Ute 2022. This segment contains some of Australia's most popular vehicles, so it might just be the most important test we do all year. Behind me we've got the seven best-selling mid-size utes, including the new Ford Ranger, but only one can be deemed the victor. Before we get started, like the video, subscribe to the Car Sales channel, and leave us a comment down below with your pick for the winner. To sort these seven out, the whole car sales team will examine them in almost forensic detail across eight segments. On-road, off-road, payload, towing, safety, comfort and convenience, technology and cost of ownership. If you need to skip ahead, check out the time codes below, otherwise stick around for the ride. We've lined up all the models as best we can based on pricing and vehicle availability, with the only real absentee being the Volkswagen Amarok, as the new one is still quite a while away. In alphabetical order, we start with the new Ford Ranger in XLT 2 litre guys. We've been very impressed with Ford's new hero thus far, but is it still the one to have when stripped of its flagship toys and V6 diesel? Our second dual cab off the rank is the Great Wall Motors Canon X. It's an outlier in this test in terms of pricing, but that's part of its appeal and it's finding plenty of willing buyers. Next up, Isuzu's popular D-Max, here as an LSU Plus. Historically bought as a dependable workhorse, the latest D-Max wants to be seen as an equal of its peers in terms of daily use too. Does it succeed? Mazda's BT50 is mechanically identical to the D-Max, but the GTSP variant we have here differs in terms of equipment. For better or for worse, we shall find out. The Mitsubishi Triton GSR is a solid value proposition, but that's only one part of our equation. Is it talented enough in other areas to lift the best ute title? Nissan's latest Navara has benefited from continual tweaks over this current generation, but whether they're enough to put the Pro 4X at the pointy end remains to be seen. Last, but by no means least, is the category's best seller, the Toyota Hilux SR5. So far in 2022, almost one in every three dual cabs sold has been a Hilux, but this is not a popularity contest. Let's get into the categories. Cost of ownership is one of the most important considerations when choosing a dual cab. These are often work vehicles travelling plenty of Ks, so fuel economy and servicing savings can really add up. We also take into account resale value, length of warranty, insurance, initial purchase price and cost of key options. It's a strong result for the Ford Ranger thanks to its benchmark resale value, the best fuel economy and by far the cheapest servicing of this group. The Isuzu D-Max also stands out with its strong six-year warranty, seven years of cap price servicing, strong resale and decent fuel economy. Other noteworthy points are the Hilux's six monthly service intervals, which are not only inconvenient but costly, and the GWM, which is very affordable but drinks the most diesel, is expensive to service and will depreciate the hardest. Though its affordability actually means you'll lose less total money on the GWM than any other ute here. The days of dual cabs being stripped out farm hacks are long gone. Today's buyers expect a comfortable, well-equipped cabin with plenty of technology as well. Here we have a split decision between the Ford Ranger and the Isuzu D-Max, which I'm currently sitting in. The Ranger's main advantage is its excellent infotainment system, which is another level beyond anything else here in terms of size and speed. But the XLT is fairly no frills compared to some of its competitors. For instance, its seats are manually adjustable cloth items, whereas for very similar money, the D-Maxes are leather, heated and powered. The D-Max also has more cubby holes, including this on-dash storage area and dual glove boxes. As you'd expect when the two are so closely related, the BT50 largely mirrors the D-Max, but it does so with a higher price tag. It's also worth mentioning the GWM Canon here, as despite the lowest price tag, it has plenty of kit, including heated electric seats, wireless charging, power windows, and keyless entry and start. Unsurprisingly, given it's the newest vehicle here, the Ranger shines for technology, with a digital dash, wireless smartphone mirroring, embedded modem, and Ford Pass Connect app. Conversely, our older contenders, the Mitsubishi and the Nissan, struggle, with smaller screens, less connectivity, and fewer features compared to their newer rivals. The Triton's shortcomings are partly excused by its lower price tag, but the Navara has no such excuse. Dual cab safety is crucial, especially as so many are now the primary mode of family transport. 
Essentially, the lesson here is the newer the ute, the better it performs. All are good with at least seven airbags, auto emergency braking, blind spot monitoring and lane keep assist. The likes of the Ranger, D-Max and BT-50 offer more up-to-date safety solutions. It's important to note that all our utes wear five-star safety ratings, but the Triton and Navara were tested in 2015 and the test has become more stringent since. That's not to say they wouldn't still get five stars now, but look for the most recent year stamp when comparing ANCAP ratings. Whether it's a caravan, a trailer, or a boat, chances are if you're buying a dual cab, you want to carry things and tow stuff, which is why we examine our contenders' towing and payload abilities. To test the payload, we loaded up the ute with 400 kilograms of soil and a couple of extra bodies. Then to discover their towing capabilities, we hitched up a two and a half ton caravan. Here, we're looking to find out how much the extra weight affects comfort, performance, and dynamics, particularly in terms of their stability and composure at highway speeds. Once again, it's the Ford Ranger that stands out. It shrugged off the payload test and towed with ease, feeling comfortable and stable. The D-Max and BT-50 also performed well, and a shout out to the Navara that has much improved towing manners. The GWM though struggled with a poor ride when laden and lack of stability while towing. Now it's time to head off the beaten track and assess our contenders off-road prowess. All vehicles tackled the same terrain designed to test their traction, articulation, clearance and gearing, and some fared far better than others. King of the off-road pack is the Toyota Hilux, primarily thanks to its outstanding traction control calibration, which pulls it out of almost any scenario. The Ranger is also impressive, especially because the traction control remains active when the rear differential is locked, something that isn't the case with the D-Max, BT-50 Triton or even the Hilux to their detriment. To be honest, all our contenders are remarkably capable in standard guise, and will become substantially more so with more aggressive off-road tyres. The biggest shortcoming was the GWM's propensity to make a loud bang from the driveline when making tight turns. The last piece of the puzzle is how these utes perform on road. To assess this, we drove them all back to back over the same test loop, which included urban and country tarmac and unsealed forestry roads. So without further ado, here are the results. In last place, we have the Mitsubishi Triton GSR. It's not a bad ute, but it's kind of the problem. If you look at all the scores, there are no real standouts, positive or negative, it's just average. Drives okay on road, it's not bad off road. Its age means it lags behind the best in terms of technology and safety, but it's a bit cheaper to buy, especially with Mitsubishi's propensity for driveway deals. There's up to 10 years of warranty coverage and cap price servicing, but for our money, the Triton works best as a more basic work ute further down the range. Once you get up to these GLS and GSR models, the value proposition becomes a bit murkier. And for similar money, others just do it better. Next up, we have the GWM Ute Canon X. Now, unlike the Mitsubishi, this thing does have some high scores. It's by far the cheapest Ute here on test, but in some ways, you'd never know. Interior presentation is quite nice. You don't have to compromise on safety or equipment, and then there's that seven year warranty. However, it also has some very low scores, and they're all pretty much related to how this thing drives. The performance is lackluster, the dynamics are disappointing, the ride is very second rate, its off-road ability is underwhelming, and the safety systems are very intrusive. And then there's the fact that it's thirsty and expensive to service. If your use case isn't too demanding, you might be able to consider the GWM, but equally, it's not hard to figure out why this thing's the cheaper option. It's also five grand more than it was a year ago, so it's not even quite the bargain it once was. Sixth place it is. Settling into fifth place is the Nissan Navara Pro 4X. Like the Mitsubishi Triton, this isn't a bad ute, and Nissan should be commended for continually updating its dynamics and safety to improve the offering. It drives all right, but there is still room for improvement. 
The coil sprung rear end is now much better at handling loads. The ride and body control aren't as polished as some of the utes ahead of it. Like the Triton, the Devara's age is also beginning to betray it somewhat, as this thing is basically 65 grand on road, yet it lacks the convenience and safety features of some of its rivals. If you buy a Navara, that's fine, but know that you could have done better. Australia's favourite, the Toyota Hilux, is exactly mid-pack in fourth position. Now, there are plenty of sensible reasons why you might buy a Hilux, and which largely explain its sales success. This latest engine update is pretty strong, it's extremely good off-road, there's fantastic resale, an unmatched dealer network, enough tech to remain relevant, and particularly with this MY23 update, competitive levels of safety gear. But, it's also subpar to drive on-road, expensive to buy given its level of equipment, and expensive to service. Like we said, this ain't no popularity contest. Our first podium contender is the Mazda BT50 GT SP. Now, without wishing to spoil the surprise of second place, given the two cars' similarities under the skin, it shouldn't be too shocking to discover that the BT50 and the D-Max scored very, very similarly. It's just tiny margins that relegate the Mazda to third place. Warranty's a bit shorter, cost a bit more to service, a bit more expensive to insure. Apart from that, the two cars are basically the same. And that's definitely a positive, as the D-Max it's a pretty good thing right across the board. Decent to drive on road and off, impressive safety credentials, affordable servicing, plenty of equipment and a solid warranty offering. It really does tick a lot of boxes. Because of that, it's tricky to pinpoint a standout feature. Actually, its safety offering is pretty good, but that aside, while it doesn't necessarily do anything brilliantly, it's really strong in virtually every area, and that's why it secures a well-deserved second place. Congratulations! If you guessed that the new Ford Ranger would win our 2022 Best Ute Award, you win absolutely nothing at all. Because it's not a very surprising result, is it? After all, the last time we did Best Ute, the previous generation Ranger Wild Track beat all this year's contenders. So it's not a huge shock that this new model does likewise, even with slightly different variants. What's most impressive about the Ranger's win, however, isn't just its dominant nature, but the fact that it comes with the relatively humble 2.0-litre XLT. Stripped of the Wild Track's flashy features and the powerful new V6 diesel, it shows just how good the Ranger's fundamentals are. It's easily the best to drive on road thanks to its direct steering, relatively composed ride, and the fact that this recalibrated 10-speed auto makes the 2.0-litre engine feel more potent. The V6 is still probably worth the extra spend if you can stretch to it, but there's less in it than you might imagine. It's great off-road, not quite as good as the Hilux in the really rough stuff, but still very capable. It tows the most easily, has the most usable payload, easily the best infotainment, and the most safety gear. About the only real criticism is that Ford has been a bit mean by putting manually adjustable cloth seats in a ute that costs well over 60 grand, but otherwise, the Ranger XLT is quite good value. The price rise over the previous generation is modest, it's got the best projected resale, the best fuel economy, and the cheapest servicing. At this point, it's really like that line from Rocky IV. Throw the damn towel! because it's a knockout victory for the Ford Ranger XLT. So that's CarSale's best ute run and one for 2022, and it's a resounding victory for the new Ford Ranger. It gets to enjoy this success for the next 12 months, but we'll be back next year with the all new Volkswagen Amarok, which will have its eyes on the title belt. So we'll see you then, and thanks for watching.